Hey guys, Virtus Education here with the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be showing you how to create your own diffuse textures inside of Photoshop, I'm going to give you an overview of what they are and most importantly I'm going to show you how to bring them into Unreal Engine 4 and bring them into your materials. So for the most part we're in the last episode when we gave you the introduction to materials in the content browser you saw that we just used basic flat constants to get the look of the material for the color. Instead of this we can actually use something with a little bit more detail. If you fly around the level that I've got here you know you can see I've got some wood text, uh, some wood materials, I've got some rock materials and so on and so forth. And just using just straight up constants into the little base color isn't necessarily going to allow you to do that because it just gives you that very flat basic color. So what we can do is we can actually bring in textures from Photoshop or any other um, you know graphics editing package and then we can bring it into the engine so let's just go ahead and give you a quick example of some of these textures if I go into the content browser head over to textures you can see I've got a whole bunch of different stuff here for example for a little character of mine you can see my diffuse texture has all the body parts here and you can also see that it's not just going to be flat colors it's actual real detail and if I zoom in you can just you can very very well see that level of detail there that we can bring out bring out into our models if we use you know if we create our own custom textures inside of Photoshop and if I take a look at this little character here you can see there's plenty of detail as I zoom into uh, parts of her body here you know so Let's just go ahead and uh, open up Photoshop. You can do this in anything you like, really, uh, whether it's Photoshop, GIMP, even Paint if you know how to set the resolution. So, you can pretty much follow along in anything. So, let's just go ahead and go to File, New, and we're going to create a new uh, a new uh, image. So, whenever you're working with uh, textures for game engines, I advise that you always make them to the power of two. So having said that, you're going to want it to be something like 10, uh, 1024, 512, 268, 2048, 490, whatever it is, or, and so on and so forth. But for now, I'm going to go for something which is going to have a reasonable amount of detail, but at the same time isn't just too overkill and will reduce, uh, reduce performance. Having said that, if you have high resolution illusion images all over your level, they're going, it's going to reduce performance. All of that has to be stored on your graphics card's memory. So now we've actually got this uh, this little image here. We could go ahead and bring it into into Unreal Engine 4 if we wanted to, but instead we're going to go ahead and bring in a texture. So if we wanted to, we could find a texture by just going ahead and typing into Google something something like uh, seamless HD textures or something. So let's just type that in. Seamless. Uh, let's just go ahead and get a metal texture. So if I go over to images. I can just go ahead and click on one of these, whichever one I like. Uh, let me see if I can type it, find a metal floor texture, or a metal, you know, something that isn't just this rough stuff. So maybe this would be pretty nice. So once I found whatever I want, oh, this one's even better. It's got a bit of a watermark on it. Uh, let's see what I can find. Just scroll up a couple more moments here. Yeah, this one looks really good. Uh, too low resolution. So whenever you are looking for um, for textures like this to dump into the engine or whatever, make sure it's also high resolution. So what I like to do is type in game textures into Google, and we can go on to gametextures.com if we wanted to, or CG textures. You know, there's lots of websites which actually give you a whole bunch of free, high quality, seamless uh, material uh, textures. So let's just go ahead and find something that is uh, nice. So let's just go ahead and grab the metal textures here. I'm going to go for something that is nice. Let's find just a base metal texture for now. And I'm going to go ahead and use this. So from here, I can just go ahead and download it. Look, download it if I want to. Uh, just you know, right-click, save image as, and you can do that. 
I've already got a bunch of text just down, down, downloaded onto my computer, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in into uh, into wherever I want to put it. In this case, it's going to be Photoshop. So let's just go ahead and do that. So if I scroll down, I should be able to find it here under TGA, and then here I can just go ahead and drag in the diffuse texture. Now, in this case, it's just going to be whatever you downloaded off the internet. So, once we just drag it in like that, you're going to be able to see it inside of Photoshop. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and modify this texture a little bit. For example, we could rotate it, we could drag it around, we could scale it, or if we wanted to, we could draw on it, we could play around with things like colors, or, you know, stuff like that. But for now, I'm just going to leave this exactly how it is, just so you can see how it works. So, the diffuse is going to be the color of the material. So, if I wanted to change this to a different color, I could do so. You know, just by playing around with hue and saturation and stuff. For example, I could make this a nice sexy pink if I wanted to. Or I could make it blue, but for now, I'm just going to leave it the default color. So once I've pretty much got this texture for the diffuse, however I want it, uh, I'm just going to quickly add on a quick logo just for the lols, uh, just so you can see that we can do quite a lot with this. We can just go ahead and save it out afterwards. Let's go to Vertis Education, Images, uh, da, 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 Logos, there we go, let's just drag this on here. And now we can just go ahead and save it onto our desktop and we'll import it into Unreal Engine. So just save it anywhere you like. It doesn't necessarily have to be your desktop. And make sure that when you're actually saving this out, make sure it's not a JPEG, it's not a PSD. It's got to be a PNG, a bitmap, or a TGA, or whatever that Unreal Engine 4 supports. I'll show you that list in a moment. So on my desktop, I'm going to save it as PNG, using a, de uh, a decent uh, name convention, something like test texture underscore D. The reason why we use like the underscore D or diff underscore something, for example, is just so we know what type of texture that's going to be. Because we're going to have multiple textures for each uh, model, like we're going to have the diffuse, we're going to have the normal, the emissive, the specular, and so on and so forth. So let's just go ahead and press save on that. And then just go ahead and press OK. And then just go ahead and open up Unreal Engine from here. Now, I'm just going to go into my content browser. And I'm going to go over to Materials. I'm going to right click. I'm going to press New Folder. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and inside this folder, I'm going to press, I'm going to right click and go to Import To. And then inside of here, let's just go ahead and grab that diffuse texture that we have. So I just saved it straight up here, test texture underscore D, and after a few seconds, it should load in perfectly fine. Now, sometimes it may take a little bit, a little while to import stuff in if you've got a slower computer or if you're recording, or even if the image is large. Like I said, try to keep the resolution relatively low. Now, from here, if we double click it, we can actually preview the texture that we just imported into the engine. And as you can see, I've got this lovely metal texture here with the Virtus Education text on it. So, let's just go ahead and dump this into a material. Right click it. I'm going to press create material, just use the default name, open it up, and you should see that by default, this is actually set up to the base color. Now, if we wanted to, we could do a few things with this. For example, if I wanted to, I could play around with uh, the brightness just by going to multiply, and then just hooking that up into base color, and we could multiply this by something. If we wanted to, we could multiply it by a constant to change, you know, the opacity of that in the sense that, you know, the default color is going to be black. If I set the opacity of this texture sample down, it's going to look darker. If I was to multiply it by a constant, a constant free vector, if I go ahead and use something like two red, one, and one, it's going to make it look a little bit darker than normal. So you can play around with that if you wanted to. But I'm just going to leave this to one. And you should see it's going to come out the right color, hopefully. So let me just go ahead and delete that. Go to constants. 
uh, and then just a normal w constant one vector and from here if it's set to zero it should just be perfectly black but it's not working too well for me so I'm just going to there we go it's updated now so if I go ahead and set this to something like 0.3 we're gonna get the texture that we had but it's gonna be relatively dark if I set it to something like 0.1 it's going to be barely visible and so on and so forth so I'm just going to leave this at uh, a, multiply, a multiplication of 1 so it's the default so if we press apply and we can just take a look at our material as we play around with these few changes that we do here sometimes it may take a little while to compile the shaders here but it will definitely work so let's just go ahead and apply this material onto something and as as I showed you in the previous episodes all we gotta do is just click and drag and it will come onto your box or whatever you do now like I said earlier you want the texture to be seamless so you don't have these little clipping issues that you can see here so let me just go ahead and put it onto a flat surface so we can see this best and I'll also show you in a moment how we can re-import the texture that we made. So I'm just going to dump it on here now, uh, dump it on the ground here. This should work perfectly fine. And it should compile the shaders in just a second. As you can see it here, it says shaders compiling. If we were to go ahead and increase the size now, maybe set this to something like 5 and 5, press apply. You know, you can see that it's going to begin to fit here. Now you can also see that, you know, it doesn't look too good because it was badly uh, rotated on the surface, but we can play around with that. You know, when we actually create static meshes, we're going to actually create something which is called a UV map, which defines on the model where you want certain parts of the texture to be. So in terms of re-importing this stuff, I'm just going to quickly get rid of the logo here so you can see everything all fine and dandy. Save as PNG just replace the default texture press ok open up this again and under my te under my texture here all i got to do is right click re-import and the logo will disappear in a second and there we go we're back to our seamless uh, material and that's pretty much how diffuse works really so if i go ahead and fly around to this box again now you should see for the most part it's going to be a little bit more seamless as we go around it so let's just go ahead and press simulate, possess, and take a look at this material in action. You can see it spinning here on my little cube. So that's pretty much everything for this video. Thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to be going over a different texture type. So I'll see you then. Goodbye.